So in preparing for today's sermon, I, I consulted the Lord, and I was like, Lord, you know, I went through this whole week, and I watched this, and I watched that, and I watched this, and I watched that. He said, I'll take you back. So y'all want to go back a little bit? Okay. Let's go back a little bit. The Lord said, I'm going to make it real simple. Stop that. Stop that. Mm. What? What? If, you know what you're doing if somebody says, stop that. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I contemplated, and I was like, well, Lord, well, where do you want me to go with this? He was like, well, I want you to go where I direct you. And I was like, well, yes, sir. So, if you're bad with me for a little bit this morning, I'm just going to tax you, and, and I'm going to try to give you a little, little information that the Lord has shared with me, and I hope that it helps you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen? Mm -hmm. Father God, before this word comes forth, we give you honor, glory, and praise. We thank you this morning, Lord God, for being in this place. Father God, we thank you, Father, for dying on the cross for us. Yes. Now, Father God, as we go forth in the furthest of this service, we ask you, Father God, to allow me to decrease as you increase in me so the word can go forth with power and with accuracy. Mm -hmm. Father God, son of God, at the gates of my lips so that I don't sin against you, so that your words will be received in the ears of those that hear. Mm -hmm. And they all say, Amen. Amen. Now, we have all been in the house of our mom, our grandmother, and if not, maybe an aunt or maybe a family friend. And we've all been somewhere at some time doing something that the Lord said, stop that. Mm -hmm. The Lord said stop that through mama, auntie, grandma, daddy, cousin, babysitter, whoever it was that was really the voice of the Lord telling you to stop that. Mm -hmm. But we don't see it like that because when we were children, we, we, we thought somebody was picking on us or, or, or we thought that we could get away with stuff so we would push the envelope and we, we didn't realize that we forgot that we were doing things that were dangerous and that we were doing things that were unsafe and things that were foolish. And we were doing things that were hurtful or not age appropriate. And somebody with a little bit more age and a little bit more sense than we had, had to say, stop that. Mm -hmm. The person us to not do whatever it was that we were doing had some sort of insight into what we were doing that it was not going to be beneficial for us. And we couldn't be beneficiaries of any further blessings because we were doing something that might impede, it might stop us, it might kill us. But we didn't realize that at that time. The person telling us often yelled at us or bellowed at us because we were so entrenched in what we were doing that they needed to get our attention. Mm -hmm. So they would have to yell at us, get, get, on, get over there somewhere and sit down. Stop that right now. I, go somewhere and sit down. Because Foolishness and folly of children causes them to get entrenched in whatever it is that they're doing. Now, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. If the children don't listen when they're children, they might carry that over into their adulthood, okay? So I'm going I'm to back up now. But you heard it said, stop that little boy, stop that little girl, get over there somewhere and sit your man's tail down. <laughs> Get over there somewhere and sit your little fast tail back. Mm -hmm. Grandmothers, my grandmother in particular, had a unique way of phrasing stuff and talking that we didn't understand at the time. And they would often use some words and say some things that were just really so far out of our wheelhouse we couldn't get it. One of my grandmother's favorite terms to me, now she had numerous grandkids, was get your manish tail over there and sit down. <laughs> you so manish. I wonder what in the world is she talking about? And the high mercy is manish. <laughs> I heard this, I know, ten times if I heard it a hundred times while my grandmother was alive. Boy, you just so manish, 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 manish. Like, okay, okay, okay. After my grandmother passed and I began to walk in the attributes of Christ and began to put away childish things and understand uh, as a man would understand and not understand as a child, I decided I was going to find out what manish meant. <laughs> now, since my grandmother is no longer with me, I want to show you the power of 
influence. Mm -hmm. My grandmother been dead off this earth resting for years. And I can still hear her calling me mash. <laughs> that is powerful influence mm -hmm. to have over someone's life. So here's what I found out about the word manish. Stay with me now. Manish is a common Hindu name that usually or literally means the God of the mind. One who controls or is mastered by one's mind. Representing intellectual ingenuity, geniuses. The word is derived from the Sanskrit word man which means mind, and ish, which refers to God or master. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that the word man is meant. Like, now, now my grandma knew about Hindu and, and all this stuff. Okay, grandma, I got you. <laughs> well, I continued my research, and another thing that man is meant was resembling or suggesting a man rather than a woman. To get a little picture painted here. I later found out that the definition had somewhat evolved and expanded to a more personal understanding, mm -hmm. a more urban, contemporary understanding. So church, here's what I want to introduce to you this morning. Here's what I believe my grandmother wanted me to get, but was not quite ready to handle it, uh, as I was not quite ready to handle it because I was too young. Mm -hmm. But here's what I believe that she was telling me. Even though I lacked experience, and even though I wasn't old enough, and even though I was not quite wise enough, and even though I was not obedient enough yet, she recognized that in me, those man qualities that I was exhibiting early. Mm -hmm. And she was trying to guide me and nurture me. So I'm like, okay, Grandma, I see what you were doing. So you weren't picking on me. You had my best interest at heart. Man is man is a cool guy. He is someone that is quite unique. He is one of the most compassionate and loving people that you will ever meet. If you've ever met a managed man or you know a managed man or you have a managed man in your life, you are truly blessed. He is the most wonderful person that you will ever come across. He's funny. He's smart. He's lovable. He's just an amazing person. He loves for you and cares for you unconditionally. The managed man always is there for you when you are down and when you need someone to be there for you. He's going to be there for you. He's the most kind-hearted person in the world, and you can have him in your life and be thankful that he's in your life, and he's going to be unforgettable. He's one of the smartest people you will ever come across, and he's got a real good sense of humor. His smile and his laugh is something that absolutely melts you or makes your day better. Now, here's where it gets tricky. What was my grandmother saying to me? Was that what my grandmother was saying to me? Was she saying and telling me that my young age, that she was trying to mold me into that type of man? Was she trying to tell me that these are the qualities that she saw in my grandfather, who she loved? What was she saying when she called me man? The man described in that last definition certainly was not me. It wasn't me. I ain't know nothing about no love and compassion. I was funny because I was silly. I was being what a kid would be. But my grandmother was telling me that I was not ready to be a man, so stop pretending. Uh -huh. Stop acting like one. Stop talking like one. Stop trying to come off as one. Because I didn't have the wisdom, the understanding to know what a man was. Now, she was telling me from her female perspective what she desired. I mean, I don't know if she had it or not. But I do know she knew what it was. Mm -hmm. And she knew that I wasn't it. I think she was saying, you're not a man yet. You're still a boy. A mere child. And as long as I'm watching out for you and I'm in your life, I'm going to call it as I see it. Mm -hmm. Now get your man's tail over there and sit down. <laughs> That's what I think my grandmother wanted me to go See, we grew up learning, church, that some things that we did were not okay. And there was going to be someone watching over us and someone directing us and someone telling us from time to time, stop that. Mm -hmm. We were always wanting to do some things.
things that we were not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And God was already trying to mold us with the adults that were around us to do what was acceptable and what was right. Mm -hmm. Now, before I go too far, there's also a flip side to that. Sometimes this went sideways because the adults in our lives did not listen themselves when they were children. <laughs> so now how could they be trying to guide us and tell us? Mm -hmm. They refused themselves when they were told to stop that, to stop that. So they carried that rebellion and disobedience on over into adulthood. Now they're raising rebellious and disobedient children who will never stop that because they didn't never stop that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. They grew up defiant and rebellious. And mm -hmm. They grew up knowing more than their moms and their dads and their grandmothers and their parental figures. And they grew up stubborn and headstrong, never wanting to stop that. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, and I like the NIV version, the New International Version. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I talked like a child and I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put away the ways of childhood. I put them behind me. Mm -hmm. The King James Version says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Mm -hmm. That's how it should be. That's right. Mm -hmm. If we stop that. That's right. mm -hmm. But if we don't stop that, we don't put those childish things away. Mm -hmm. We carry those childish things on over with us into our adulthood. Amen? Amen. So today's sermon I'm talking about, and I'm telling you that God says, church, that we need to stop that. Okay. Whatever that is, we know what it is, we need to stop it. But if we don't know what it is, he's going to point out some things to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stop, as defined by Webster's and Miriam's dictionaries, is if you've been doing something and then you stop doing it, you no longer do it. Mm -hmm. That's real simple. You cease from it. You leave it off. Mm -hmm. You leave it out. You discontinue to do it. You discontinue to cause it to have place in your life. You put an end to it. You close it. You fill it. And you stop it from obstructing you. Mm -hmm. You don't allow it to hinder or prevent the passage of whatever. You don't allow it to get in the way of whatever. You close it up. You block it off. You don't allow it to, to be passable. You make it impassable. You don't allow it to any longer obstruct the flow. Mm -hmm. You cover up foolishness with truth. It causes you to change course, to change action. So from these definitions, I came up with a definition of my own. And I want to see that if I included everything in it, if you can recognize what stop means. We all have had somebody that went against something that we've been taught and many have tried to teach us, and we wanted to follow our own path. That's just the nature of truth. We've all had somebody that said, I need for you to do X, Y, Z. Teacher, coach, mama, daddy, grandparent, babysitter, brother, husband, friend, cousin, whoever. And we decided we're going to do it different. We denied the flow of God's word to have access to our hearts and minds. We stopped the flow of the living water and ceased it from our lives. We left the word out of our decisions, therefore we obstructed the very flow of truth into our lives. Mm -hmm. Our pride made the word impassable and ineffective in our lives. We have hindered the will of God and leaned to our own understanding. Mm -hmm. We have chosen to do it our way mm -hmm. and not stop doing it our way. Our stubborn nature blocked off our ears, dulled our senses to the degree that the holes and crevices in our lives became tainted with truth and willful disobedience filled it. So since the word of God can't change our direction because of the choices that we are making, we do it our way. We have a form of godliness, but we are denying the power that is in us. Now that's my definition. And the Lord wants us to stop that. Mm -hmm. 
The Bible says in Job 14, hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Well, okay, if you move it and somebody say stand still, you got to stop. You got to stop your movement and you got to stand still. So if we are going in the direction that we are going and we think that we are going right, and the Lord says, stand still, that means he's bringing a halt to the direction that we're going. Mm -hmm. We got to stop that forward movement. We got to stop that. Stand still defined as a situation or a condition where there is no forward movement, no activity. All movement has abruptly stopped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I like how the NIV version breaks it down. 1 Corinthians 15 and 34. Come back to your senses as ye ought mm -hmm. and stop sinning. For there are some of you who are ignorant of God, and I say this to your shame. Wait a minute now. Stop that. Come back to your senses. Mm -hmm. Stop that sinning. Stop that doing what you know you're doing. The good news version of the Bible says it even better. Come back to your right senses and stop your sinful ways. I declare to you that you're ashamed that some of you don't know God. <coughs> some of you, not anybody here, but some believer, some unbeliever, don't know God like you claim you know God because you have yet to stop that. Mm -hmm. See, church, when someone is telling us to stop that, whether we take heed to it or not, that's a different story altogether. Mm -hmm. We can find ourselves being right where we want to be, mm -hmm. regardless of the consequences. We will allow ourselves to be right where we are. It's been said oftentimes, you know, you really ought not to say that. You really ought to keep that to yourself. I'm going to tell them the truth because I believe they need to know it. Regardless of the consequence, instead of stopping that, when the wisdom comes forth, you go ahead and let your foolishness come forth, regardless of the consequences. Mm -hmm. We live in a world where people feel like they got a right to say whatever they want to, however they want to, to whoever they want to, when they get ready. Mm -hmm. Regardless of if it hurts them or not. Mm -hmm. As professing Christians, I'm here to tell you that the most hateful things can be said on social media. Mm -hmm. People are nasty. They bully one another. Mm -hmm. They post things that they shouldn't post. And if this has never happened to you, I submit to you, if you continue to keep living and you continue to stay on it, just wait a while. <laughs> Before it's all said and done, you're going to get caught up in somebody that disagrees with you or undermines you or, t or belittles you or comes at you. <laughs> when you live your life in, in the realm of the media, you forget who runs that realm. You forget mm -hmm. who's the pot, who holds the prince of the power of the air. You forget what the realm of the atmosphere that those words go through and the channels that they go through. You remember whose domain that's going through. Mm -hmm. So that outcome is going to be nasty. Perhaps you yourself are the bully. Perhaps. Hmm. Maybe the words that you say, but it's just, that's just how you deal with people. You're just one of those type of people who's just so blunt that you just got to speak your mind. Okay? This culture that we live in values that, revises in that. It likes that. It likes loud people. It likes, because see, you can make money if you're loud and if you're ignorant and if you are over the top. I see men on TV with bowls on their head and walking around in high heel shoes and purple lips and green eyeliner wanting to be seen. So the loudest voice always is going to be heard in the quietest room. Mm -hmm. On more, more than one occasion, we've all had fits of rage or, or outbursts and 
uh, and in anger, whether it's been toward God or whether it's been toward ourselves. The Lord says, stop that. Stop that disobedience. Do you remember this classic story in the Bible about Lot's wife? Mm -hmm. and, and she was beckoned to not turn around and not look back and to go forward and to walk in the blessings of God and to do those things. But, but because of what was in her, she couldn't stop that. She couldn't stop that stuff that was going on in her mind. I wonder what's going on behind me. I hear this and I hear that. I hear the, the, the grumblings and I hear this. And she was beckoning. Now, she already knew what the outcome was going to be. Mm -hmm. But because she couldn't stop those voices in her head, because she couldn't turn off that pride and she couldn't turn off that, that doubt and she couldn't turn off that wonderation, that's my word, in her mind, mm -hmm. she decided that she wasn't going to stop that. She was going to do what she was going to do. Mm -hmm. That's the condition that we find ourselves in when the Lord tells us to stop doing things. We're going to do it regardless of the consequences. Her habit of disregard and her habit of disrespect and her habit of rebellion and defiance was on full display the moment that she turned around. Mm -hmm. And she didn't stop that. And she suffered. She suffered for her choice. This is just like we should be reminded of the sin in our lives. There's no time for delay. There's no time like the present time to stop that. There's no time like right now to stop doing whatever we've been doing. Stop that. Stop that. Whatever it is that we are doing that's against God's order, God always gives us an opportunity to stop that. Mm -hmm. We forget that our spiritual health and our mental health and our natural health are governed by the stop that rule. The doctors say you need to stop that smoking. The doctors say you need to stop that wine. The doctors say you need to stop that drugging. Not because it's affecting the doctor's health. Not because the doctor going to die if you don't. Because there's a possibility that you might die mm -hmm. if you don't. But we make up in our minds that I've been smoking since I was 13 and ain't kidding me yet. You got to die something. We talk that ignorant talk because we don't want to stop that. Mm -hmm. We eat until our legs rub together. We, we eat until they have to wheel us to the car. We eat until our feet swell up and they're about to bust like basketball because we don't want to stop that. It's the taking over our lives. We go to the Chinese restaurant and we see Buddha sitting over in the corner, sitting down with his belly out and his navel out and his bald head and his earring, and we want to rub his belly. Not we, but some. Um, I ain't interested in, in, in the spirit of gluttony that, 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 that runs Buddha. And I don't rub Buddha's belly because I very rarely will go to a Chinese restaurant. Even though Lot's wife heard the same thing and heard the same warnings, she knew what would happen. She knew what the outcome would be if she didn't stop that. But because of her disregard, her disrespect, and her rebellion, and her refusal to stop that, she received her just reward. Had she only remembered to stop that, stop that rebellion, stop that I'm doing it my way, that would have probably been a different outcome. Amen? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4 and 25. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Mm -hmm. If you're lying, and if you're not speaking the truth, stop that. Yeah. Church, we got to start telling the whole truth. We yeah. got to leave out details. Mm -hmm. Lying is lying. This is probably one of the easiest and simplest things to do because we learn how to do it all on our own. <laughs> Didn't nobody have to give us a class right. online. We watch good liars coming up. We watch people not telling the whole truth or leaving out bits and pieces of the truth. And we formulated and decided early on as little bitty children that we, if we don't tell the whole truth, we can get out of trouble. Mm -hmm. if, if we tell grandma that we didn't do it, even though she know we did it, we might not get no whipping. 
if we the loudest voice in the room and we say, uh-uh, you did it because I'm older than you younger and we can watch you get your tail toe up, we can tell a lie and get you in trouble. <laughs> huh? We've been there. We all been there. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. We tell lies. Elaborate lies. Fancy lies. <laughs> Great big gigantic lies. Or little bitty white lies. Little brown lies. Little bitty, uh, that ain't gonna hurt none if I just if I don't tell the whole truth. Did you feel the car today? Something as simple as did you feel the car today? Uh yes ma'am, I did. And then yes ma'am, get in the car and get ready to take the car down the street and ain't no gas in the car. I thought you told me that you feel the car. I, did I say that? I did feel it. When was you talking about? Oh, oh, I filled it up last week. You tell a lie and clean it up that quick. <laughs> Most of the time, we consider these little white lies and half-truths harmless. Mm. We lie to cover our actions, and right. we lie when things are half-true. We lie because it's just a part of the sin nature that we have not yet given over to Christ. Mm -hmm. We lie to smooth things over. We lie to get others to forget who we really are. If I'm telling you a lie, you're forgetting about the last time I lied to you. Or the last time that I lied before I lied before I lied before I lied then, because I'm all the way into a brand new lie. Now. <laughs> so you didn't forget about the 15 other lies I told because I'm telling you another lie. But now you get it in your mind. Well, is this boy telling me the truth or not? <laughs> huh? I'm just talking about it. We fail to remember that we lie because it's easy. Mm. It's easy to lie. It's faster. To get us out of a situation that's going to have negative consequences that we already know if we tell a lie versus if we tell the truth mm -hmm. and have to get the same consequences. Mm -hmm. We lie so much that we can convince ourselves that we're helping the other person when we tell a lie. <laughs> we sparing them. We, we don't want them to be hurt no more. So we're not going to tell them the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So help you God. And we'll raise our hand and tell a lie. <laughs> I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. God said, stop that evil talking. Mm -hmm. Stop that bitter biting. Mm -hmm. Stop that loose lipping. Stop that busy body attitude. Let no more evil corruption and evil speech come out of your mouth. Stop that. Mm -hmm. And until we do, church, we have to deal with the consequences. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's nothing more destructive in a church than a lying tongue. Mm. Many churches, church leaders, <clears throat> church members, mm -hmm. so-called pillars of the community mm. have been destroyed because of a lie mm -hmm. or a half-truth. Because someone can open their mouths and tear down the image of others, mm -hmm. <clears throat> break their spirit, causing them anguish and misery. Saying that they said something, saying that they did something that they did not do or that they did not say. Mm -hmm. Simply to benefit themselves. Mm -hmm. God says we ought to stop that. We ought to stop that pretending. Second Timothy 3 and 5 through 7. Having a form of godliness, but denying, denying the power thereof. Mm -hmm. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Now, it says silly women. This is a scripture that men like to use a lot. But let me break it down for you. Not only is it referring to silly women, it's referring to silly men too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop that sin. Stop that silly. Stop that lust. Stop that lack of true understanding. That's not just women, church. Mm -hmm. That's not just silly women. That's silly men, silly children, silly anybody. Mm -hmm. Stop that. Claiming to be holy when sin is on clear display. Mm -hmm. Stop that sitting around in your little church and fulfilling duties that only happen in your church. Stop that not wanting 
to be a part of the bigger community. Stop that not seeking souls and trying to redeem the lost. And stop that not going out and spreading the kingdom message of salvation. Stop that foolishness of the church mentality that it's my church. This is my church. No, it's not your church. The church you are. So how can that be your church? Oh, are you an idol now? Mm -mm. Uh, stop that foolish thinking. <clears throat> stop that status quo foolishness. And begin to do what Jesus called us to do. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to say something. And for those of you who are listening, you can get in where you fit in. <laughs> Pastor so-and-so. Apostle so-and-so. Doctor so-and-so. Bishop so-and-so. Evangelist, so-and-so. Teacher, so-and-so. Leader, so-and-so. Elder, so-and-so. Prophetess, so-and-so. Prophetess, so-and-so. Deacon, so-and-so. Deaconess, so-and-so. Whoever. If I left out anybody, oh well. After more than 20 years in ministry, I found out some things. I'm very impressed with some ministries carrying out the Great Commission. And if I can be truthfully honest, I'm saddened and I'm ashamed and utterly appalled at other ministries mm -hmm. and some of those other names that I've called, mm -hmm. some of those other so and so. My experience in ministry has led me to this conclusion. When someone in the world is lost, they don't know what they're looking for. They don't know what it is that they're seeking. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's missing from their life. That's right. They don't know what they need spiritually. And most of the time, they will probably not come into your church. To seek an answer because of the experiences that they had before. Mm -hmm. There's a fear of being judged mm -hmm. or not dressing well enough. Mm -hmm. Or some ignorant, carnal-minded, well-meaning member of your congregation with an unseasoned, out-of-time, unsanctioned word whispers in their ear. Mm -hmm. Supposedly giving them what thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. But now remember, so and so's, these people are coming from your flock. Mm -hmm. When we begin to teach love and truth, we can stop that. We can head it off at the pass. I'm a 60s baby. I'm a Andy Griffith baby. I'm a Bonnie Pfeiffer. We're going to nip that in the bud. <laughs> Nip it, nip it, nip it. We're going to stop that. Church, we need to realize it's time to take down the walls of exclusion mm -hmm. and realize that the church is not our precious building or our sanctuary of the sinners. Because what else do the sinners have to go if they can't come to your precious church? Amen. Huh? Where else can they go to seek salvation? Where else can they go to get healing? Where else can they go to get uplifted? Where else can they go to get some spiritual truth if they can't come to your church because of what they got on or how they smell or where they're located or because of the color of their skin or because their hair is nappy? Where else can they go if they can't come in your sinless church? Mm -hmm. Huh? That's right. They go back where they came from. That's right. mm -hmm. They go back to the club and to the strip club and to the dance halls, and to the pool halls, and to the corners, and they go back home because you too scared to let them come sit beside you because they might reach in your purse and you might have to give them a piece of chewing gum because they smart enough to realize that they breath stink even if they body stink. Huh? Where else can they go to seek salvation? <coughs> Professing Christians. We live in this world together, but we're so alone. Amen. I want to share something with you, and I want you to bear with me for a moment. I, I think
think that, that this is going to be powerful and this is going to impact your life greatly as it has impacted mine. If we are always concerned about the foolish things of the world, mm -hmm. at what point will we decide that we're going to stop that and get back on God's agenda mm -hmm. and start back reaching out to those that are lost, those captives that are still in bondage, those who are deciding that their lives are out of whack and they need something and they don't know but when are we going to stop our foolishness and start back doing it God's way mm -hmm. church it, 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 it bothers me it bothers me that we don't engage other races or other ethnicities because we are looking at our little spot on the earth tell people all the time, listen brothers and sisters I don't know what heaven you preaching I don't know what heaven you going to but it ain't just going to be white folks there mm -hmm. it ain't just going to be black folks there right. Mm -hmm. it ain't just going to be brown and yellow and beige and purple dot and purple it ain't just going to be us who think it's all about us, it ain't just going to be us there That's right. mm -hmm. That's right. so if it's not going to be just us there right before we get there. <laughs> Other than get there and be disappointed yes, and not want to stay. Because sure. it ain't like we thought it was going to be. Because we done lied to ourselves all this time. The Lord said, stop that. Amen. Amen. We can't do this by ourselves, church. We're too small, church. We're not properly equipped of a church. Our pastor stutters. We can't do it by ourselves. Stop that line. Stop those excuses. Why don't we go to the hospitals to visit those that are in the hospital? Why don't we go to the jails to visit those that are locked up in jail? Why don't we go where people are where we know where they are? We have to start learning to seek them out because they're not going to come looking for us until it's at the very last minute and they're on the deathbed, then they can't come. We got to go to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got so many rules in place in so many churches. People are just afraid of rejection. Rejection hurts. Mm -hmm. People want to feel like they are a part of something. They are accepted. Even if they know that they ain't quite got it all right yet, they still want to be a part of something. We say, well, okay, Bishop, we do all of that. We love the people. We, we go out. We go out and we do all that. We feed the people. We do all that. And, and, and I say, applause. Thank you. But God says, there's still more to do. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to say to you, if you tell me, well, we do and here's what I'm going to say to you. Well, why don't you come teach us your strategies so we can grow like you grow. Mm -hmm. So we can be successful like you are successful. So we can be as effective in our ministry as you say you are. Mm -hmm. huh? Show us how you raising the dead. Mm -hmm. Come over here and show us how you healing the sick. Come over here and show us how the shadows of your ministers are healing people in their presence. Come over here and show us how you setting captives free. Come over here and show us how you making the lame walk. Come over here and show us how you doing those greater works that the Lord said that we could do if we died and not. Come and show us. Since y'all doing all of that, come over here and show us how to do it. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. so and so say, whoa, 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 bitch. Now, we ain't, we ain't raised nobody from the dead yet. I, I'm like, no. What about all them great things y'all doing? Huh? Well, 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 we ain't healed nobody yet. Why don't you, you ain't healed nobody yet? I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. So if you ain't doing any of that and what you're doing is good, I'm just saying that the Lord's saying there's still more to do. Mm -hmm. Now, we ought to stop that talking about what we are doing 
and what somebody else is not doing Amen. and collectively come together and try to do it together because we're going to heaven together. That's right. All right now. Amen. All right. I'm only saying, church, that there's plenty of kingdom work to do. Mm -hmm. Did we forget the Bible concepts and did we forget those things that are steering us and those experiences that are driving us toward the kingdom? Did we forget that Jesus sat down with sinners mm -hmm. and publicans right. and harlots mm -hmm. and prostitutes mm -hmm. and sinful people? And he wasn't afraid. He wasn't fearful. Too many Christians today have this impression that they can't go somewhere because it's going to be filled with sinners. Mm -hmm. uh, the church is filled with sinners. You just don't know it. That's right. <laughs> Because they lie so good, they cover so good, they masquerade as angels of light so good that you can accept they sin because it's hidden, but you can't accept somebody's sin that's open. Stop that! Amen. That's right. Amen. Jesus not only went where sinners were, he sat at the table with them. That's right. He didn't sit at the table by himself. He invited them to come and sit down and eat with him. And while they were eating, he engaged in conversation. With mm -hmm. He shared good news with him. He shared spiritual concepts with him. He did all of these things sitting at the table with him, and we don't want him sitting on the pew with us. Mm -hmm. Jesus shared divine inspiration, mm -hmm. divine teaching, and we can't seem to get out of our own way. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying, Stop that. Stop that arguing. Stop that foolish murmuring and complaining. Philippians. For it is God who works in you to will and do and act in order to fulfill his good pleasure. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Without murmuring or complaining. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's good. Walking around in the wilderness murmuring and complaining. Walking around in the house, lights on, heat on, food in the refrigerator, murmuring and complaining. Walk around on your job that's only paying your minimum wage. Be thankful that you got a job murmuring and complaining. Mm -hmm. See, because the Lord can't bless you like he wants to bless you until you get in line with what he said. See, when you're thankful for what you got, he can uh -huh. give you more. You got to be proven to be trustworthy over the things that you, mm -hmm. the little things you got before he can give you the big things. That's right. Mm -hmm. So count it all joy. Don't worry about the amount of money. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. I know it's easier said than done. I know it's hard. I'm there with you. Been there, done that. But listen, think about what's happened and transpired before us in the Bible to give us examples that it's possible for us to beat this thing, church, Amen. if we just stop some stuff. Amen. Further of the scripture goes on to say, for it is God who works in you to will and do and act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault mm -hmm. in a wrapped, in a warped and crooked generation. Mm -hmm. Then you will shine among them like the stars in the sky as you firmly hold on to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on that day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. When you get there, you say it was all worth it. Mm -hmm. It was all, it was all okay. I went, at least I went through hell. Now I ain't cussing. But I went through hell to get where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And it was all worth it. Church, mm -hmm. I've been through hell to get where I'm at now. And it's all been worth it. Mm -hmm. No regrets. There's no situation in your life that God can't handle. There's no situation in your life that God can't change. The answer to most of our problems is real simple. Like God said to me when I came to him, just tell him, stop that. That's the answer. Stop that discouragement. Stop that guilt. Stop that resentment. Mm -hmm. Stop that doubt. Stop that failed thinking. Mm -hmm. Stop that jealousy. Stop that addiction. Did you get that? St just stop it. Yes. Whatever it is that you're doing, stop it. You ought to stop what's not pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. Church, I'm closing. And I want to remind you of a story that I hope will drive home this point. 
that I am making today. There was a little boy that went to church to listen to a sermon by Pastor So and So. The little boy had to be around six years old or so. He asked his father, Daddy, what does Pastor So and So do the rest of the week when he's not preaching at church? Daddy said, Well, son, you know, Pastor So and So is a very busy man. You know, Apostle so-and-so is a very busy man. Prophet so-and-so is a very busy man. Deacon so-and-so is a, you get the point, they very busy. Mm -hmm. He takes care of church business, visits the sick, ministers to the poor and to the needy. And then he has to have time to rest up. At least that's what he's supposed to do. That is it that daddy talking to his little six-year-old son mm -hmm. who had wisdom beyond his head. Mm -hmm. Daddy said, you know, son, talking in public ain't an easy job. Little boy said, you know, daddy, listening ain't easy either. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Mm -hmm. We talk about all of this stuff in church that we want people to do. That we want people to do. Mm -hmm. And we want people to do. And they ain't even listening. Uh -huh. Huh? They hear very little of what we say. Uh -huh. The Lord say, you better stop that and not listen. You better start hearing what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah says, and I'm, I like NIV right now, to whom can I speak and give warning? Who will listen to me? Their ears are closed so they cannot hear. The word of the Lord is offensive to them. They find no pleasure in it. Everywhere in the pulpit today, some pastor is facing that. Somebody going to be offended. Somebody not going to want to hear. Somebody going to stop the word of God from having a flow, a free reign in their life. Somebody not going to be able to be successful in walking the blessings of God because they won't stop that ignorance. They won't stop that foolishness. They won't stop that not listening. You better stop that. Zechariah 7 to 13. But they refused to pay attention. Stubbornly they turned their backs, stopped up their ears. They made their hearts as hard as twin and would not listen. So the Lord Almighty was very angry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the Lord reminded them and said, When I called, they did not answer. So when they called, I would not listen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? They call. Whew. I would not listen. So sometimes, because you didn't stop that, you can pray till your mouth catch on fire. The Lord say, he ain't listening. Uh -huh. You're going to have to go back and do something and stop something to get something. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. That's right. Matthew 13. Whosoever has been given more, he will have an abundance. Whosoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Mm -hmm. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Mm -hmm. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. Mm -hmm. So listen, they can be hearing it, but not understanding it. That's right. In whom, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, you will be ever hearing, but never able to come into the knowledge of truth. Mm -hmm. Never able to proceed. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears. Mm -hmm. They close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Mm -hmm. They might understand with their hearts and turn away and stop what they were doing so I can heal. Mm -hmm. You ought to stop that. For I tell you the truth. Many prophets and righteous men long to see what you did not see. And to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Mm -hmm. There are many people that are dead and gone. That would love to hear mm -hmm. what we have the opportunity to hear. Yes. That would love to see what we have the opportunity to see. Mm -hmm. And we refuse to stop that. 
Church, the Lord is simply saying, whatever you are doing that's not right, stop that. I've given you shepherds who are good and understand the good way. Mm -hmm. I've allowed them to be molded by life and sharpened by iron and adversity. They have been afflicted for my name's sake. They know the ways of the world, yet they decided and made a choice to abide in the ways of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Hear them and know that I have sent them, and they have not sent themselves. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. Mm -hmm. With your own eyes, you will see them, whether you turn to the right or to the left. Your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. That's Isaiah 30, 20 and 21. John 10. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. Mm -hmm. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Mm -hmm. When he has brought out all of his own sheep, he goes ahead of them. Mm -hmm. He leads the way for them. He's the example for them. Mm -hmm. He's showing them which direction they should go. They hear his, 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 his voice as he calls out to them, sheep, sheep. And they follow him because they know his voice. Mm -hmm. But a stranger is yelling to him too from the other pasture. Mm -hmm. A stranger is yelling to him from across the street. A stranger is yelling to him from the bar. A stranger is yelling to him from the hell phone. A stranger is yelling to him from Facebook and Instagram and Periscope and Snapchat. But a stranger, they will not follow mm -hmm. because they don't recognize his voice. Amen. Amen. Church, I, I truly believe that God wants us to, to stop whatever it is mm -hmm. that it is that we're doing. I don't have to take the finger of judgment and point out things that individuals are doing. Mm -hmm. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit through conviction is supposed to do. It's not my job per se. Now, I can rightly divide the word of truth and understand that there are some things that I can judge. Mm -hmm. I'm smart enough to know that, but I'm not going to pass judgment on things outside of God's ordinances and outside of what God has directed because that would kind of be counterproductive, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. If I'm always pointing out <coughs> what somebody is doing and what somebody has not been doing, what's my thumb doing? Going back at you. Huh? What about me? Right. What about me? Uh, how is it that we use the platform all over the land and country to beat up the sheep? Mm -hmm. To beat them up, hold them hostage, put the elbow on their neck and hold them down. Listen, church, if something going on in church five days a week, it's not possible for you to be there all five days a week. So it's unrealistic. For me as pastor, deacon, a prophet, and apostle, so and so to think that you got to be there. That's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. But all over the land and country, people are forsaking their families to go because pastor so and so, apostle so and so, doctor so and so, mm -hmm. bishop so and so said they got to be there. Mm -hmm. And ain't raising no dead. Ain't healing no sick. <laughs> and every time they go, they got to give a, how you going to give an offering five days a week? Where you got that money coming from? <laughs> Every time we come into church, we're supposed to take off. Who knows that lie? I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. See, because we don't stop that foolishness, we're not going to get people to come in. You got people out there got money, won't come because all you're talking about is money. Quit talking about it. They'll give it. The word say God don't want it if they don't give it freely. No, right. they keep it. So, what are you talking about it for? He said, Give no thought of the mark. We need to stop doing it whatever we are doing, that does not totally fall in line with the Word of God. I'm not talking about totally fall in line with the vision that we created for our ministry. That's not what I'm talking about. That's good and fine too. But the vision that you created for your ministry is supposed to fall in line with the Word of God. Amen. And if it does counter to that, then uh, you suspect, and I'm suspect about what you're doing. 
That's why I tell you, since you're so successful, start giving other ministries classes on your success. So we can all be as successful as you are. Amen? Amen. Church, I've given to you what the Lord has given to me to give to you. I've shared with you what the Lord has shared with me to share with you. I will leave you with this before we go into the handling of our church business. When we know better, we do better. That's right. And until we know better, we can't be expected to do better. When we do better, we live better. Life becomes better. But we got to know how to do it better first. The expectation for us to do better is to know better. We can't do better until we know better. We can't know better until our mind has been renewed. Mm -hmm. See, because if you're still thinking the same way as you used to think, the Lord said, well, you got to stop that thinking and start thinking like this mm -hmm. so you can get what you desire. Mm -hmm. So you can have this. See, we stop our own blessings. We obstruct. We stop the flow from going forth for, because of the things that we won't stop. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So at this point of the service, I want to consider this point of the service uh, ended and going to this point of the service where we get our offering and then we 